Hey everyone, my name is Rui and we are here. This is going to be week number two of the PGPL season four. And uh, it's going to be really exciting. We are up against Banana and her Orlando Sogaleo. Uh, our former rival. We're not going with the rivalry season for this shorter season, but um, we have made we have had a lot of battles against each other. We have battled more than most people, uh, just in general. But oh man, okay, we're going to see the Volcanion, the Rebombi. Uh, I want to say Tangela Tangro. Um, Cloister, Hit on top. And Landorus. So right off the bat, no Azelf is really interesting. No Bronzong genuinely does blow my mind. No Bronzong genuinely does, does blow my mind. No Cobalion. No Pukimuku. No uh no Mega Tyranitar, which is really, really interesting. No Mega Tyranitar is really, really interesting to me. Okay. So I don't quite know how to play this. Uh in, in terms of a lead in particular. But actually, before I even forget, I'm gonna take a screenshot of the uh, of the team. But yeah, I don't really know what she would want to want to lead off with here. Um, probably just wants to lead off with the Greninja, huh? Volcanion's gonna be a pretty major issue for me, I think, just in general. I think. I think I do want to lead off with Greninja. Maybe Infernape as well. I'm going to lead off with Infernape. I think it does... I think it offers the most pressure here. But I don't feel great about it. Um, This is a very, very interesting matchup, right? So, in terms of leads, I could definitely see a Rabombi lead right off the bat. Uh, there are a few things that I can see here, but yeah, there's a Rabombi lead. So, probably going to be sashed if I had to uh, make a guess here. But... <sighs> Getting this thing worn down early would be nice, although it does have a reasonably easy play into Volcanion. I would be curious as to what type of damage I would be looking for with her bone beat. It would obviously be resisted, but U turns is still doing respectable damage, and this is probably sashed anyway. So whatever I do turn one is probably not gonna matter as much as I would like to think. Huh. I'm gonna click U-turn. Only because... Only because I think U-turn is gonna allow me to get into my Greninja before the... Before the speed drop, and I can kind of... Try to play this accordingly. I'm not too, too sure. She might also not expect the uh, dual scarf here, but actually, what I can also do is just try to get up rocks reasonably early on. What are the real downsides to going into? I mean, I could go straight into Sand Slash and try to pressure. Although Energy Ball. En energy Ball is definitely a thing. Yeah, I'm going to try for this play here. Psychic right off. Okay, that is uh, one of the last things I would have expected. That is. Wow, okay. That was a remarkably aggressive play that I did not see coming even a little bit. But I think I'm just going to click U-turn again because I do think that, um... I do think that Volcanion is reasonably likely. And I, I guess I can just try to wear this thing down. I'm not too... 
I'm mind blown, right? So I've already gone through this uh, in week one against Mars, and then a really aggressive leader Bombi here. Now, she could know that this thing is scarfed, because, that I have dual scarf here because of the fact that I brought this in on a Robombi, which can just bug buzz me on the following turn, but I don't know. We could, I could be, I could have Water Shuriken, Specs Water Shuriken, who knows? Uh, against the Volcanian team, of course. That's top tier plays, but um, I don't know. I don't know what you would expect me to do. I guess realistically, yeah, the dual scarf is reasonably obvious, but um, I don't think I mind here. I don't think I mind here. Because this is honestly kind of the way this team's supposed to work, and it's supposed to be pretty aggressive with Dual Scarf and uh, just kind of going for it, right? So, I think... I think her best play would probably be just to stay in and click Sticky Webs here, but at the same time... Yeah, it wouldn't, be, it wouldn't surprise me at all if that's what she's doing right now. Although now I definitely think it's worth it to try to make some things happen with my... No. Hmm. Maybe not. I think my best play might honestly just be to go into... My mill tank here? Does mill tank make does mill tank make sense here? Maybe. Okay. Let's just just go for the moon blast. Okay, okay. That does a sizable amount of damage, but uh. Okay, so realistically, this thing was brought here in order to kind of deal with. I think toxic is always going to be my best play. This thing was primarily brought here in order to deal with um. Mega Tyranitar was meant to be like my main Mega Tyranitar switch in. And uh, I'm sure other things. Like, I'm sure this thing can potentially deal with Landers, potentially. Um, but also, yeah, things like. It's supposed to spread Toxics around, kind of uh, wear down the team. But um, I don't want to play this altogether too passively before I get Hazards up. So I would like to try to get some Rocks up reasonably soon. But. Um, it just feels really tenuous here when I'm trying to figure out a way to maneuver in some other things. Like, like, uh, I don't want to leave my Sand Slash out there to potentially not get a Rapid Spin off later on in the match. And I definitely don't want to, um, leave my Scarf Greninja out, like, Scarfed into Rocks or whatever the case may be. It does, uh, bring out this thing. So, Intimidate's gonna be fine. And I can get a Toxic off here. The super duper obvious... In fairness, you probably did expect me to want to click Rocks on that turn as well. Um, maybe just expect me to click Body Slam, I'm not too too sure. But... Close Combat isn't too unlikely. Toxic isn't too unlikely. I do have Heal Bell on this thing. Part of me just wants to click Milk Drink in all honesty. But, I can also, hmm, see, okay, so, building this was very difficult for me, and I didn't want to leave myself without removal because, um, Sticky Webs was somewhat of an issue for this team, so, at the last second, I swapped out, uh, Necrozma for Sand Slash, and this would have been the moment for Necrozma. But I think what I should do, yeah, I think I'll probably just go into my pre-marina. And what I'm thinking here, what I'm thinking here is that my pre-marina can potentially, yeah, just, okay. That's totally fair. Um, this is also why I thought that heal bell on my, heal bell on my Mill tank would be super important, but um, I do kind of just want to get off a pixie plate moonblast and kind of start to deal a little bit of damage to the team. Now, Volcanion is a huge, huge issue for my team just in general. 
But if the Volcanian does come in, then at that point, I think I just have to fire off a Toxic. And this thing is honestly kind of meant to deal with a Volcanian as much as one can deal with a Volcanian, right? So, uh, it's never going to look pretty, but I'm hoping that it's going to put me in an okay position. Something has to take a reasonably fat moon blast, and then um, potentially eat a toxic on the following turn. The ideal situation would be if she doesn't realize that I am uh, as bulky as I am, and uh, okay, that's going to be the this thing. And this thing can absolutely be assault vested, and that's going to be what I assume. I think. Yeah, that has to be uh, Assault Vested. I'm reasonably sure. That's about 30-ish percent. Tang Growth. Yeah, that is absolutely Assault Vested. 1,000%. Okay. Best play is 1,000% to go back into um, my Mill Tank here and try to heal Bell off my Primarina, as well as Milkshake. I don't think this Tangrowth is ever going to really be able to beat me 1v1, although we don't really beat each other, right? So, um, I'm taking away its stab because of Miltank's Sap Sipper, and I'm kind of forcing Banana to have to either click Toxic or... Oh, no, it's Assault Vested, so it's... Uh, so what would the set be, right? Probably some, some Hidden Power. Maybe Hidden Power Ice. Uh, Knock Off... Giga Drain. <coughs> Excuse me. And possibly EQ. I don't know. Maybe. But regardless, uh, I don't think that that set would ever 1v1 one on one my Mill Tank. And my Mill Tank is honestly just going to have to uh, make it through this session. Miltank is honestly going to have to do a lot, but and it's only because I was not able to bring my Necrozma, right? Um, but yeah, that's fine. I think that's going to be fine. I think I can Toxic. Well, just invite the Hitmontop back in. This makes me want to double. I'm going to double. I'm going to double. Actually. This might be my play here. No. Hmm. I'm going to milk drink. Um... This is not going to be easy. It's definitely going to be a slower match. Um, but Milk Drink is going to do a decent amount for me here. And... I'm mildly... Uh... I'm mildly tempted to eat a close combat and click... And try to wear this down with a with a seismic toss because I know Hitmontop's HP hit, seismic toss is gonna do like a third or so. Um and close combat will be uninvested to a more or less max um defensive mill tank. So it should be doing about fifty percent. Um I think I wanna get a heal bell off first. I think I'm gonna do that because it by the looks of it Right, by, by the looks of it, um, close combat is barely going to do more than I'll get back off of, off of Milk Drink. So I can Milk Drink up, eat the close combat, and then let the Toxic take its toll, for a little while at least. It does withdraw. And does let me get the Heal Bell off. So... Uh, she definitely expects me to do something there. Maybe go- oh, probably go back into the free Yeah, 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 that definitely makes sense. 
but I can just click Tonks again. She can definitely expect that and want to go into the Hypnotop, although this will just allow me to kind of wear the Hypnotop down even more uh, over time because it, it will nullify this turn basically but uh it will put me at full in order to be able to seismic toss and then and then milk drink the damage off on the following turns so uh this type of game is not one uh that would be ideal for her and i'm still reasonably upset that i'm not able to get off of these yeah, it's just gonna come back in. That's totally fine. I'm, a, I'm a little bit upset that I'm not able to get off any rocks or spikes, but this thing's gonna be a problem no matter what I do. So, um, I do want to play this a little bit slowly, and this is exactly what I meant in terms of not wanting to let, want to leave my sand slash out there in order to kind of take damage and be worn down over time because if this, uh, sand, this. Um, him on, him on top can could 100% just as easily been my sand slash where where uh, it's being put in a position where it has to like move in and out and kind of do more than it ha than it should be doing and then if I lose my sand slash for the later game then that's gonna put me in a not ideal position right so now here's where it gets super duper interesting because I can really easily click heal bell here um but part of me really wants to hard read a switch here and click double toxic. Well, not double toxic. You guys get what I mean. But toxic into a mon that's already toxic. Um, <sighs> no, the safest play is always to click heal bell. If she clicks double toxic, then I'd be blown away. I'd, I'd like genuinely love that play, but... Um, Close combat is probably going to always be your best play. And I pretty much revealed my entire um, mill tank set, unfortunately. But um, there was so much that I just did not have to deal with. I think, I think, look, the reason that I built the team this way is because um, I, I could very easily lose to Tank Growth on its own. And I could very easily lose to Volcanion on its own, right? So... Even just trying to like lure out the Volcanion in order to um, try to deal with it a little bit um, is kind of how I felt like I should play this. There's the close combat. I don't think it'll do much more than half. Yeah, okay, okay. That's about what I would have expected, but uh, it's not looking ideal for me, right? I think it might have a little bit of investment because um, I, I think... Or it could have just been a high roll. It, it absolutely could have... Just been a high roll for sure, for sure. I'd, just like a slightly higher than average roll. So I can just milk drink this damage off. I don't think I mind here. Um, the larger point is that after this turn, if this, if this, uh, I keep wanting to call it Dreidel, if this Simultop stays in, then that will allow me to seismic toss on the following turn and be able to uh, essentially take this thing out. So, yeah, this was a very awkward way to play my melting, but uh, it felt necessary, right? Like, I don't really... How else was a melting supposed to 1v1 a hit on top right now, right? So, uh, I really didn't know how else to play this. Um, and even now, right, I'm still soft to Volcanion. I'm still not doing the best against it. Uh, I'm still soft against a lot of her um, threats no matter what happens. The only thing that I'm hoping for right now is that... Okay, this is mildly risky, but um, I think this turn is going to put her hit on top right around... Oh yeah, no, never mind. Okay, that was more toxic damage than I thought, so... Um, I can for sure just click Seismic Toss here, and look, my Miltank is a lot lower than I would have liked for it to be, so it's not going to be the best answer to, to um, something like Landorus anymore, so that's why I brought m many more um, physically defensive answers than I thought I would need, right? So, I, I, I was originally... Oh, okay. 
Okay, okay. I very much like that play. But Tangrowth is always going to be a reasonably free milk drink for me. It's always going to be a really reasonably free milk drink for me. Um, now I really wish that I clicked milk drink that turn, but, um, yeah, she, she read me really hard right there. Sorry about that. Yeah, no, Cloyster can absolutely still rapid spin, um, which would be problematic, but I doubt it. Um, still has plenty of defog, right? So, um, can Rome be defog? I don't, maybe not, I don't know. Um, but definitely Volcan and, and Landers can still defog, potentially. But realistically, yeah, it was probably ra Rapid Spin, Close Combat, Mock Punch, uh, Toxic. That could have very easily been the set. Makes total sense to me, I think. But, uh, this thing's gonna come in. I don't want to take another Moon Blast, but I don't have much that would want to regardless. I can go super hard in Infernape. Yeah, no, that, that's 100% my best play. If she reads that and clicks Psychic, then I'd be blown away. But uh, I also do have a Greninja play, although, I don't know. Greninja... She could super easily call this. I, I almost definitely lose to Tangrowth if she calls this correctly and just clicks Psychic right now. But these are the plays we got to make, bro. <laughs> right? These are just the plays that we got to make. Okay. Okay, we should reasonably take that. Not that reasonable, but you know what? We are out here. I think even if the Volcanion does come in... I think even if the Volcanion comes in... Flare Blitz makes sense to me. Stealth Rocks also makes sense to me. U-turn makes the most sense to me. If I really do believe that the volcano is about to come in. If I really do believe that the volcano is about to come in. I don't know what I want to do. I really don't know what I want to do. I don't want to let the volcano in for absolutely free. If the volcano does come in, then I'm pretty positive I have to sack something. I'm gonna click Flare Blitz here. I'm gonna click Flare Blitz. She's thinking about this too, so she's really thinking about what whatever I'm gonna do. She's seen she's seen U turn. I think she has to assume Flare Blitz. Um, she doesn't know about about South Rock, but possible, right? She knows that the Rabombi's in danger. Yeah, no, this is, again, 100% one of those uh, situations where... Oh, my God. Okay. Goes into Landorus. Okay. That's really interesting to me. That's really interesting to me. Oh, I clicked Flare Blitz. Oh, my God. Was that a crit? Oh, no. Oh, okay. Okay. I don't feel, like, the best about that, but... You know, I genuinely, I genuinely thought that I had clicked a uh, U-turn there, but uh, that's gonna be a Landers down, man. Uh, I'm speechless. Volcano well, super easy to come in right now. I think Pre Marina covers most of my bases. I think Pre Marina covers most of my bases, except the Robombi. The Robombi's gonna be super tough. I could honestly bring in Sand Slash too. Sand Slash does make a lot of sense to me here. You know what? We're going for it, man. I think at this point we're just kind of going for the win, but I feel real bad about that Landers, man. Because I 100% called that wrong, so like, I clicked Flare Blitz, obviously, but I thought I clicked U-Turn. <laughs> thought I clicked U-Turn. Um, like, like I'm sure, like, at, in the moment that I clicked Flare Blitz, I, I thought it was the right play, but then, uh, like, two seconds afterwards, I convinced myself that, uh, the, that the right play would have been to just, to just click, um, 
to just click, uh... Man, that Landers could have been Scarf too, right? Landers is really the only mod on our team that makes sense as a strong Scarfer here. Um, realistically, it doesn't beat either, either of my Scarfers, but, uh... Yeah. That's gonna be this thing. There's no reason not to click South Rock, I don't think. Sticky webs would be unfortunate, however. However. Hmm. No, I don't know. Rabombi is really dangerous. Rabombi beats me potentially. Because all this thing really needs is energy ball for it to beat my Primarina, right? And the fact that... Okay, so actually... Okay, I was, I was literally just about to say... Um... It might honestly be... If... If... No, that doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. Never mind. Oh, okay. That's really interesting. Let's me get a stealth rock off. I think this thing still switches in. I'd be very, very curious to know what type of um Rabombi set she's running because I expected Sash 1000% and Sash Sash should have beaten me. Sash should have just gotten off webs right now. Because Volcanion under webs destroys me. Destroys me. Maybe she maybe she thought maybe she thought I could beat this thing. I could beat the Rabombi with my Sand Slash 1v1. And then get off a rapid spin, although that's super dubious. I think she doesn't I don't know, man. I don't know, man. Because Robombi on its own is primed to beat my entire team. Or at the very least, if Robombi doesn't beat my team, it creates conditions under which Volcano beats my team. Um. And yeah, I don't, I don't know what to say, man. I'm speechless, because if I do win this, it's going to be off the back of that crit, and I don't feel great about that. Um... And it sucks because Necrozma has such a fun time against so much of this team, but I couldn't justify it over uh, spinning away webs. There's a Giga Drain, there's a Sap Sipper, okay. Uh, not like it matters, but uh, because it doesn't matter because uh, I don't have an offensive move that benefits from attacking. Uh, my only offensive move is Seismic Toss. But what does matter is that this will allow me to get off a milk drink. Which is going to be really huge for me. But man, if she really went in on me with that... It's really blowing my mind because Rabombi just Moonblast destroys the rest of my team right now. Moonblast just destroys the rest of my team right now. I guess you really just aggressively... I don't know. Okay. Oh, you know what? You know what? You know what? I think the only reason that she's not really, like, aggressively um, thinking that a Rabombi can win is I think she thinks that I'm more priority than I have. Between Water Shuriken and potentially Extreme Seed on, on Zygarde, if those be Rabombi, but I don't have it. I... We devoted too many resources to trying to beat the Volcanian, like, straight up. Um, and legitimately, yeah, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Um, she's also wondering if I'm gonna, if I would be so bold as to click Toxic right now, which I could be, like, Toxic really does the most of the rest of our team does stay in so would have allowed me to kind of toxic 
get a toxic off right now but uh i'd be surprised rock tomb Ooh, that's super duper solid i like it i love it okay that was a crit fair enough but toxic is still super solid against the rest of her team none of her other mods are toxic and uh no matter what i get to toxic off it's, it, like i said it would be super solid right now um but yeah that amount of speed control really is interesting because i don't know it implies to me that she does have the sticky webs but didn't want to go for it there my only thinking right is that she's choice she would force herself to choice she would force her to choice herself into webs and she didn't want to do that because i could i could uh get rid of them easily with rapid spin and i can retaliate back with like a rock slide or a stone or but um but that sand slash matchup she 1000 percent wins that sand slash matchup i don't know i don't know that genuinely surprised me and it's funny because a non-choiced rabombi would have destroyed me it could have just gotten the webs up and then gone for energy ball in the next turn and that probably just destroys me um i mean obviously she probably felt like she needed the specs maybe for zygarde maybe for something else i don't know but um man if this is the volcano that's spicy dude that's spicy because i think once this volcano goes down oh no cloister can still beat me yeah no cloister for sure for sure cloister for sure for sure So this is the exact type of interaction that I kind of prepared for, right? Be to not let Volcanion kind of destroy me, right? So what I think I have to do here, huh, okay, I don't know, I have to think this through because my initial thinking here, my initial thinking here was that Was that Zygarde was more important? I gotta go straight into... Yeah, I'm gonna go straight into Zygarde. I think... What I was gonna do was go straight into Free Marina. But preserving Free Marina for the endgame in particular to take one hit from the Cloister and then hit it back with a Pixie Plate Moonblast, I think it's gonna be a lot more valuable than trying to preserve um, Zygarde for the endgame. Especially when Zygarde, yeah, does get... Um, being a little bit by some of the mons in the back. Now, I, I've revealed Sap Sipper, so... Um... A sub would be super duper interesting, but... I'm trying to think of what else. Focus Blast. Okay, that is super dope. That is super dope. But a Steam Eruption... Yeah, I'm I'm very, very special defense. I'm max special defense, and I'm... And I'm uh, 2 is having HP. I think that... I, I think it's just because that's the most amount of HP that I can have while taking, like, 13 points from Stealth Rock. Something, something to that effect. Any more HP and it would have gone up to... What, you guys get it. Um... A thousand Arrows is super free. But he might want to switch, expecting me to click Thousand Arrows. I really want to click sub, sub right now. I really want to click Sub right now. Tangrowth could absolutely come in, too. But... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I would have really liked to have gotten Spike up with Greninja too, which is uh unfortunate that I never got that opportunity, but realistically it only really helps me with Cloister and I really don't want to get reversed by Cloister, like genuinely. Which is really one of the only reasons why I am trying to set up a sub right now. I'm trying to play this as carefully as possible, even though he can just kind of, or she can just um uh, wear me down with Steam Eruption, especially defensive as I am. Steam Eruption is still doing the most to me right now, and it's still banana strong against me. Um, but up here feels, feels reasonably strong. Uh, I can I can only reasonably hope that I there's a Steam Eruption. Okay, can potentially burn me. Also, it's it's a reasonably fast. There's okay, okay, okay. So, I essentially don't have leftovers anymore, which, I mean, is fine, but, you know, it's gonna be whatever it is. 
the the only real reason I even have, you know, sub is because I really need to be able to, is because of this volcano inter interaction, right? Um, is so that I can potentially eat up turns of of this volcano. Well, all right, maybe, maybe we should, what I should have done is just collect thousand arrows, and thousand arrows would have just done it here. Um. Yeah, no, I definitely should have just clicked, uh... But, yeah, no, if I was in an offensive dragon dancing Zygarde, then, yeah, that, that burn would have been devastating. Now, what this does, actually, is... Yeah, I don't know. It does allow Cloyster to do a decent amount. But, okay, okay, so I could have clicked Thousand Arrows, but... If this Toxic, if this turn of Toxic takes this thing out... Which it probably won't, yeah, it, do it doesn't. I think what I really kind of have to do here is go for the double protect because it would allow me to stay behind a sub in, in, specifically for the cloister. Right? Because because if I'm not behind a sub, then uh, then I can't just toxic the cloister and I kind of just lose to that too. I'm gonna go for the double protect. We don't get it. It's fine. There's a steam eruption. Uh, now she's definitely free to try to use this thing to set up for reasonably free against my against my uh against my Zygarde. Cloyster would get a reasonably free shell smash. Although I do have the toxic, so she. So she would have to be wary of that a little bit. Um, Revolve makes sense unless I, I have a real toxic yet, so she might be expecting me to still have the extreme speed. But said, but trying to win with cloisters as valid as any as any el thing else she could be doing right now. Um, Rock blast, icicle spear, hydro pump just kind of just beats me, honestly. Like, that is no meme at all. Uh, Tangrowth would be interesting, although I can... Just, just getting a Toxic off on Tangrowth um, feels like it's enough here. I can actually heal the burn off of my Zygarde, but it, that doesn't even really feel worth it in a world where uh, I am so low and uh, Tangrowth Giga Drain can just KO me. So, I don't know. I don't know how that really works out mentally, but... Uh, I don't know. There it is. There's, there's the win button. <sighs> okay. I gotta click Toxic. It's really my only play here. There's a Shell Smash. Can I, can I try? Oh my god, she can Shell Smash twice. If I, if she thinks I'm not gonna protect, she can Shell Smash twice. There's white herb. She can shell smash twice. Because, okay, so here's the thing, right? I don't know how fast this cloister is going to be. I don't know how fast this cloister is going to be. But, let's just say max speed cloister for the sake of argument, right? At plus two, do I outspeed with Scarf Greninja? I do. Okay, I barely outspeed. That's max, that's max speed jolly. Okay, so I guaranteed outspeed with Greninja. I can get one one dark pulse. Actually, I can try to I can try to wear down with U-turn a little bit. Um, but that would require me to sack off um something like Sand Slash or something. But if she self smashes again, then that would be devastating. That would honestly just be devastating. Um Oh my god, if she smells if she sh Jesus. If she Okay, 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 okay. A second shell smash would have been devastating. Uh, Greninja Dark Pulse. Actually, Greninja Dark Pulse should KO. I think it... Okay, let's assume max HP. Well, no, now it's worn down so much with... With rocks and everything else. Oh my god. That honestly could have given me a heart attack. Like, genuinely. Um, if I really want to preserve differential, I think I can go into... I think I can go into Greninja, eat an Ice Shard. 
Although, I don't know why she's going for Ice Shard if, uh... Is it even worth it? I don't know, man. If Greninja goes down, then I kind of just lose. Well, no, then I go back into Zygarde to protect again. I burn some more turns. Okay, I don't know. Maybe I've talked myself into it. Especially when Greninja isn't doing a whole heck of a lot for the rest of this match. So let's see whatever happens. Let's see whatever happens. There's another Ice Shard. Okay. Cool, cool. I think we should be okay. I don't know if that was worth it. I don't know if that was a, just an unnecessary risk. But uh, Dark Pulse here should KO. Surf is actually close to being a KO, which would have been ideal. Um, I, okay, so you know what? I think this is important. No, no, I don't know. I think it's important because it maintains Zygarde as a sack, right? So, I don't know. I don't know what it does for me, I guess. I guess if anything, it'll allow me to see, it'll give me a little bit of insight because it'll allow me to see what the Robombi chooses to lock itself into. Um, Tangrowth is absolutely still a play, but Tangrowth is dubious right now. I'm honestly afraid of Scarf or Bombi, right? Because I, I I don't even know whether or not the Landorus was Scarf. Um, so I don't think she's revealed a Scarf or potentially a Turbo Bombi, right? So, uh, and I've seen that it's been locking itself into moves. It could potentially, well, no. No, because the Scarfed Robombi would have outsped my Scarfed uh, Infarnape on turn 1. So, it's not Scarfed, I don't think. Um, But, yeah, no, exactly. So, this is going to allow me to sack off my Zygarde now. So let me see what it's locking itself into. And... Then Greninja can come back in, click Surf, and then, I don't know, man. There's the Moonblast. Right, this thing can't be Scarfed, right? I'm, I'm almost positive I outsped it on turn one. But this will allow me to click uh, Surf. And honestly, Tangrowth can come in, but Tangrowth would, Tangrowth never beats my, my mill tank. So from there, from there. I think Miltank is healthy enough where it takes one Robombi hit and then, um, goes for a, goes for a, um, uh, thing in return. What's that, what's that move called? This is a long match. <laughs> what's that move called? Um... I don't know, man. I also don't want to, like, particularly play this entire, like, endgame out. I don't know if there's any way that I could, like, presumably give up on to make this go any faster. I don't think there is, actually. I think I just ha- Nope, I don't want to go into that. I, I think I just have to go- have to go into, um, my mill tank and try to wear this thing down. I think- I think I can maneuver it so that I still give the last KO to Greninja. If I can maneuver this thing to to get worn down with Toxic. There's the Rock Tomb. Yeah, no, I forgot about the Rock Tomb. Um, I obviously don't want to get knocked off. Uh, that would be the most unfortunate. But at this point, I don't even really have to be cute with how I play. I just have to click Toxic. I have to get this thing worn down. I think, uh, if anything... Yeah, I don't know. I guess the Stingrowth can still beat me, like, legitimately. I don't have Ice Beam. She doesn't know that I have Ice Beam, so I don't know. Maybe she thinks that I'm, uh... Playing this out like a jerk, but, um... 
I really don't have many ways potentially beating this. Other than wearing this thing down with Toxic. But uh, it's just... I don't know, man. I, just, I probably, probably got bailed out by that crit. Although, I don't know. If I had to click U-turn like I was supposed to, that, that always gives me Sand Slash. And then that lets me maneuver around a little bit. But, um... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. My game plan did not look pretty, like, even a little bit. But... It did work out the way that it intended against things like the Volcanion, right? Because the Volcanion could 100% beaten me. Um, if I played around it even just a little bit differently, right? Um... And I just kind of have to milk drink here. But even a few different plays, um, the Volcanion could have done... Uh, could have punched a much bigger dent against me. Um, a handful of other things just could have punch so many dents into my team. I, the Cloyster could have beaten me, right? If I didn't um, play that as the way that I did. I'm going to attempt a Seismic Toss. And then... Um, there's a knockoff. I don't know. If I can, I would really love to give this final KO to Super Ninja. But if I can't, then I can't. I mean, what am I going to do, right? I think this is the time. I don't think there's anything... Unless she's a mad woman and she goes for a Giga Drain into a... Into a Sap Sippermon. I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think anything she can do can KO me. And it's funny, because actually, uh, whether she clicks Rock Tomb or Knock Off, it's going to have the same effect as slowing my speed or one stage. But uh, I do get to keep my... My Scar. And... That, it, okay, there you go. Perfectly in range for you turn to be the final move of the match. It's been uh, 45 minutes, but we do get the final KO. And that was a really stressful match. Like I said, I had to play it the way that I had to play it. Um, I didn't really know what else I could have done. But that's going to be week two. We do get off to a 2-0 start against, honestly, two of... Um, the OGs from season one, two of uh, my favorite people that I've ever come through the PGBL. Um, and I couldn't honestly just say any more wonderful things about them. They are wonderful content creators between Mars and Banana. But uh, that is going to be week two. We're going to be moving on to week three. And we're just going to see whatever we can do, right? So it's only going to be an eight-week season. It's going to go right up to the to the release date for Sword and Shield. We're going to, like I said, we're just going to do whatever we can do. And that's going to be it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be back really, really soon with more pieces of the PGBL as well as uh, other stuff to come really, really soon as well. But with that, once again, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm going to be once again out.